everybody. We are so excited today to be back doing one of our very famous previews where we talk about the movies that are coming up in the next sort of couple months, three months that we're going to be talking about. And we don't cover every single movie, but we cover most of the most of the big and small movies that are getting any kind of sizable uh, rollout at all. And we have a lot of fun. And we're going to be looking at the May, June, and July releases. And I'm joined by my good friend, David Healy. Hi, thanks for having me, Rachel. I'm a little nervous. Oh, dear. Uh -oh. I don't want to say anything bad. I don't want to make anybody angry. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> um, I don't think we have any DC movies on this list, though. So. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so we're just going to dive in and we just give our quick thoughts mostly on the trailers, maybe some other marketing that we'll talk mm -hmm. about. And we usually say whether we are not excited, kind of met on it, <laughs> very <laughs> excited, and uh, and let us know in the comments section where you are on the scale for these upcoming films. So it's pretty fun. And <laughs> so, David, how have you been? I've been uh, pretty good. Been yeah. busy this time of year, uh, trying to keep up with all these movies coming out, which <laughs> is difficult. But um, we got a lot more. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have way more than I in this yes. in next recap because my because of all the drama and my uh, and my grandma died and everything. So it's, it's, oh yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's been a, a crazy couple of months. So, mm -hmm. uh, but. Anyway, let's dive in. It's going to be fun. The first movie we have, we're starting with the 3rd of May. The first movie we have is The Intruder. This is our kind of sort of home invasion kind of thriller mm -hmm. uh, with Dennis Quaid <laughs> staying around the house. When he didn't. Uh, what are your thoughts? You, you know, we get this kind of movie fairly frequently now, and yeah. I've just come to not expect good things. And I don't think this trailer looks great. No. Um, so, yeah, I don't think it'll be very good, to be honest. I agree. I th thought it looked really derivative and bland. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I would say not excited. <laughs> no, I'm not very excited. I'll definitely see it, but uh, I probably won't like it. <laughs> yeah. So then on the third, we have Ugly Dolls. And this is animated film based on the, I guess, whole line of dolls that were in the 90s, I guess. I don't know. I never, they were past my time. Uh, but it is a musical. <laughs> and uh what did you think of the trailer um i think it looks okay i mean um i i didn't know it was based on actual dolls i just thought it was like a an original concept um but I, i'm not really sure if the music will be any good that's my biggest concern um like if you can't have really strong music don't make a musical please so. yeah i agree i think that's probably the biggest concern is the music and the voice acting mm -hmm. you know so i don't need pitbull in this movie <laughs> pitbull and kelly clarkson and stuff like that like it's singers i guess or whatever yeah. gonna do what they do but i don't know if they should be voice acting animated films but right. i'm kind of hopeful that maybe it'll be a little bit of have a surprise it's been kind of a weird year for animation so <laughs> far i haven't really loved anything either small or big uh, yes, and so it'd be cool if this was just sort of like, oh, that was really fun and way better yeah. than I expected. So I guess I would say I'm kind of met on it. Me but too. Hopeful. But hopeful. And I don't think they look that ugly. Yeah, that's true. They kind of soften them. It seems like a combination of Boss Baby and uh, and Trolls. <laughs> uh, well, I like one of those movies, so... <laughs> Well, because of the whole like factory and there's the yeah, ones that don't have like, lost baby. And so I don't know. We'll see how yeah. that works. But um so then on the third we have Long Shot coming mm -hmm. out. I've heard really good things out of South by Southwest about this movie with Charlie Theron and Seth Rogan. I kind of 
cringe because how many times have we seen sort of the gorgeous model, you know, stunning woman fall for the schleppy <laughs> bro with it, you know, that like has t-shirt and cargo, you know, shorts. Like, oh, right. I don't know. That's kind of a groaner to me. But, but. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they say it's supposed to be kind of like the reverse uh, pretty woman. Uh, although Seth Rogen is no Julia Roberts for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, like it has a pretty good Rotten Tomato score. Uh, that has me optimistic. I certainly wouldn't have guessed it would be that well liked, but, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see if that goes down within the next few weeks. (laughs) This is very similar to basically what happened with in Knocked Up. Oh, really? Seth, well, yeah, Seth Rogen plays the sort of sleppy guy oh okay i thought you meant like the with the um with its critical reception oh oh i don't know about oh, yeah. that but this no, is I a see what you mean. story mm-hmm. uh so i don't know I'm, I'm excited uh but uh i'm i was kind of surprised that people liked it so much so we'll see yeah how it is uh so then we also have on the third extremely wicked shockingly evil and vile and i want you to say what you thought of the trailers first since i've seen yeah um so i don't really know how to feel about this movie based on the trailer um it it doesn't seem like it's uh got what i would be interested in as far as like a serial killer movie like i'd rather see the actual events and not the uh fallout afterwards um but I don't know. I'm still kind of looking forward to it. I know you've seen it, so. Yes. So I've seen it. It's going to be very divisive. There are going to be people, okay. people who think it's brilliant and think their strategy and their approach was brilliant and, and they'd have a case for it. So it's, it's, it's just going to be whether, whether you kind of buy what they're selling or not. And for me, I, they, take the very, they take the approach of we are going to show sort of the most clean cut version of they they want to kind of trick the audience into feelings as much sympathy as is humanly Mm. possible for ted bundy and their argument is that that is an accurate representation of how he presented himself and so they're 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 trying to get you to strip away all of that baggage of things we know in the last you know whatever 20 30 years 40 years whatever long it's been i forget but i don't know i think they just went too far because i just i left thinking like are we supposed to be rooting for this guy like it was the (laughs) weirdest tone it's like it's like watching some kind of underdog legal drama it's not a thriller at all if you're expecting scares it's not scary at all like aside from like a sort of a philosophical scare of like how can somebody that looks so nice be this bad person like but as far as seeing anything scary at all it's not at all it's just a courtroom drama almost the whole time so if yeah <laughs> so that I would just say doesn't manage, sound like my thing manage your expectations is what i would <laughs> say uh and I, I admire it for making different choices but in the end i couldn't recommend it i guess okay good so to know i would say i guess not excited since i've already seen <laughs> so what where so you're kind of a man on it who'd you say yeah i'm i'm more of a man yeah. yeah so at least you watch it from home true yeah <laughs> i'm not to spend any money <laughs> and i do think the performances are all around good in it good yeah so okay and then we have wine country and there's not not no denying that all of these women are really funny but but I don't know. I felt a little bit like, is it going to be, I, I, I just get really tired of the whole, look, women can be raunchy too. Look how funny they're saying naughty words. Like that whole sort of, I don't know. I, the whole shock humor of, of uh, a group of women kind of doing naughty stuff. I, I'm not that big a fan of it. The trailer, I, don't know, I didn't love it, but I'm hopeful just because I know how talented all these women are, but so I guess I would say I'm met on it. Okay. Hopeful. Yeah, I thought I thought this looked pretty funny. Um, I like most of these actresses as well. It's interesting to see Rachel Dratch kind of take the lead here. 
um, because she's she's never really been a leading lady. Like she's kind of that side character in her shows and uh, yeah. SNL even. That's true. But um, yeah, I think it looks pretty funny, and uh, I'm looking forward to this one. It's actually. directed by Amy Poehler, right? Mm-hmm. It yeah. is. So that'll be interesting. Right. Uh, yeah. It's it's actually based off of um, Rachel Dratch's actual birthday party. So. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Uh, so uh, then we go to the 10th of May. We have Pokemon Detective Pikachu. And if you had told me last year that I would be excited about <laughs> a live action Pokemon movie, I would have said you're crazy. But I think that the trailers have been really funny. And I, I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. I've never had any interest in Pokemon. Like, I can't even name 10 of them. Uh Um, But I do think it looks pretty good. And it looks like it may be something that people can enjoy even if they aren't into Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I'm actually kind of looking forward to this too. Excited. So very good. Okay, then we have The Hustle. This, uh, uh, This is Anne Hathaway, Rebel Wilson. And... I kind of feel like they'll have good chemistry. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like uh, I feel like it'll have a lot of grown groaner jokes, but I feel like it will, in the end, be their chemistry and have enough laughs that I'll enjoy it. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I do think it looks good. I, I'm, the trailer makes me laugh. Yeah, it just does feel a little bit like some like the type of movie we've seen a few times, like uh, mm-hmm. Spy or... Um, it's literally a remake, yeah. right? Oh, it is? Yeah, it's a, I think it's a gender swap remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> I could be wrong, but that's what I, that's what I think. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, you're right. It definitely does, and yeah, you know, Rebel Wilson can be mixed. She can be very funny. I thought that isn't it romantic was hilarious, but, uh, you know, we'll... Mm-hmm. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So I would say I'm excited for it generally. Yeah, me too. Me yeah. too. So then we have Tolkien, and this is uh, Nicholas Holt. It seems to be his role to, lately to be in bland, kind of boring, like, not, I mean, biographies about people. Like, he was not, also in The Favorite, which is oh, nothing like what you just described. <laughs> but he was in that. He was one of the Catcher in the Rye one. He was in uh i swear there's another there he's been in several <laughs> mm-hmm. uh but it looks fine it looks serviceable it doesn't look great to me yeah i i agree with you it's been a little bit since i've seen this trailer so i it didn't leave that big of an impression on me but i'm hoping it'll be good um yeah it'll be interesting to see kind of um where his inspirations came from in creating the lord of the rings so yeah, yeah. Hopefully I'll like it, but I'm more of a meh than excited. Yeah, agreed. Me too. All right. Then we have Palms. And this this is our sort of this year's installment of old people can do stuff too. Movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like every year we get a couple of these. And this time it's old people can be cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks cute. I think it looks fun. I I like these movies. These old people can do stuff movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, last year it was Book Club, which I book didn't club. really enjoy. Yeah. But I think this looks way better than Book Club did, uh-huh. personally. And um, I'm excited to... Oh, her, her name is, has left my mind, but uh, Danny DeVito's ex-wife. Oh, Rhea Perlman. Rhea Perlman, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see her. I haven't seen her in anything in a long time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it does look cute. It looks inspirational and fun. and uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd say excited. Same here. Uh, So then we have The Biggest Little Farm. This is a documentary uh, about this couple that goes and starts a farm, leaves their big city life. It's the ultimate hipster fantasy. (laughs) (laughs) Very exciting. Uh, I think this movie will completely 100% depend on the chemistry of this couple. Okay. If you like them and you're kind of rooting for them and it's if 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 you're not and they're just either bland or like not likable and annoying then it won't be good but if they're if 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 they're easy to root for then i think this will be a fun movie yeah i see what you're saying i think the, the draw for me is more 
um, these the cinematography they have here, like all of these like amazing camera shots that uh, it really sells the movie for me in the trailer. So I think yeah. that will have a lot to do with whether I enjoy it or not. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Just seeing like that's true. How how much they can keep that cool visual going. So I can see that. Mm-hmm. So I'd say, um, like in between men and excited. Yeah, I'm, me too. Me too. <laughs> um, okay, so we have a dog's journey. This is decidedly not excited because I mean I like the dog's purpose just fine, mm. but I don't like a movie where dogs are dying right and left. This is not this. This is the weirdest set of movies I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't like it, and I don't know. It's just. I can't believe they're making another one. It's so yeah. weird. So oh. the, wait, just to get get uh, get my facts right, this is a sequel to The Intruder, right? <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's a sequel. I think the the dog died seven times in a dog's purpose, or six oh, or well. seven. I'm like, this is traumatic. You know, <laughs> all these people losing their dogs, and just because you have Josh Gad's voice, it doesn't make it better. And so yeah, this then it's going to be that again going through all these owners <laughs> so this is a not excited for me yeah i i haven't seen the first one so um i'm not super excited i do think maybe their intention is to like desensitize kids like from when their pets actually die like oh it's okay <laughs> Well, they're gonna come back <laughs> yeah, their spirits just coming back into another dog mm. they're gonna like go up to all the dogs and be like are you my friend are you <laughs> yeah. are you buddy he died i don't know very weird uh, <laughs> um then we have the, these are on the 17th we have john wick chapter three i haven't seen any uh john wick movies uh but it looks it looks good to me yeah um it looks it looks decent. Um, I haven't seen the first two either, um, but I hear so many good things that I'm definitely gonna have to catch up before this comes out. So we've got a few weeks. Um, yeah. We'll see if that actually happens or not. But yeah, I, I would not be surprised to see this be another big hit um, and get great reviews just like the first two did. So yeah. So then on the seventeenth we have. Uh, we have the sun is also a star i this i like the fact that they are a diverse interesting looking couple Mm -hmm. and their new faces that i haven't i'm not super familiar with either of these actors and i i think it could be okay but it looks (laughs) it doesn't look great Mm -hmm. i mean uh, it's kind of a take on sort of the serendipity idea of like uh, we'll, we're gonna have the great day and then we're never will we ever see each other again and leaving it all the fate and whatever but <laughs> i don't know yeah i see what you're saying i think that it does look like they have good chemistry yeah. um the actor i'm not familiar with him he seems funny and charming yeah um and i do like the girl she's from blackish um so yeah i actually think this will be pretty good i mean it's it's no dying teenagers this time, I guess. Somebody's <laughs> being um, deported this time, but um, yeah, I think it'll be pretty good. So I'm a little excited for it. It's a, it's a rough world for young love these days. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. So yeah, I mean, I I I was kind of grumbling about it, but I'm probably uh, like a met too excited, like in between mm. there. Uh, so I I I really do like the fact that they're a diverse couple. And, yeah, me too. So me too. Good. So we'll see. Uh, so last one, the seventeenth, is an uh, an an I don't know how you say it. An Naira and Naira. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this looks a lot in plot, like the Chinese movie, The Wandering Earth, that came out a couple months ago that I got to see, uh, which was about these people that are literally trying to move the earth closer to jupiter it was really really oh, wacky uh, it was very over the top but kind of fun for that purpose to me mm-hmm. and it's kind of like a michael bay type movie but done without the sexism and, <laughs> and racism um and so and but this looked very similar to that to me and i don't know 
it looked a little boring <laughs> to me. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It it does look a little boring. I I'm not sure what language it's in. Um I mean have you noticed that this year it seems like space movies like this are just a very big thing? Um yeah. like there's so many like high life. Um oh yeah, I know I really want to see that. Oh yeah. High life looks incredible compared to this. <laughs> I mean I think it yeah. looks incredible either way. Yeah. But um and then there's uh Lucy in the sky, I think with uh, Natalie Portman. Right. So, there's just a lot going on with space, so <laughs> we'll see how this holds up. But I yeah, am not super wandering Earth. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, yeah. So I'd say not excited on that one, but we'll see. Who knows? Same. So on the now we're into the 24th of May. So we have Aladdin, our lovely live action Disney remake, and I'm not as down on this. Surprise. I mean, I'm not excited, <laughs> but I'm not as down on it as a lot of people. I'm not as like super attached to Aladdin as I am to Beauty and the Beast or the Little Mermaid. Right. Personally, I still like it, of course. And I don't think this movie is going to be good, but I feel like it's just going to be a kind of, I don't think it's, I don't think I'm going to be like super irritated by it. Like I was with, with Beauty and the Beast. I, I think that it'll be serviceable. I think it'll be boring and just kind of bland. And, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. I am not a fan of this idea of like they're supposedly modernizing Jasmine and I'm like what are you talking about she was literally like not refusing to get married and sending the suitors out with the tiger after them like <laughs> what uh you know she was not some kind of regressive woman like that makes me really annoyed but yeah. I don't know. I was fine with it. The that one trailer, the first trailer where they showed the genie looked terrible, but yeah, I don't know. I guess I made you know, it. Uh, the genie has never bothered me on these trailers I've been seeing. Like I've never found that to be an issue. My main issue is that I don't see anything new with this. I don't mm-hmm. see real reason to do it. Agreed. I like it when these these Disney movies like they're doing something creative and unique, like a different perspective um, yeah. or kind of deviating from the storyline. This looks um, like a straight up remake. Um, so I hope it surprises me, but yeah. I'm a little bit mad right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least the singing looks, sounds a little bit of singing we got in the trailer. Mm-hmm. It sounds pretty good compared to Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, it so. sounds a lot like the animated version, though. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that's totally, totally yeah. true. Uh, so yeah, eh. um, then we have Brightburn, and I don't know. I was just very blah on this. I I know people are excited because it's like James Gunn or whatever is involved. Uh, it's like a creepy Superman kind of vibe, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I just. I, I left feeling very uninspired by this trailer. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't feel the same way as you. I I think it's a pretty interesting concept. And um, I think I saw a Red Band trailer recently that uh, got me even more excited. Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty dark. And I like uh, some good horror movies. So this is kind of a different take on it. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of first time it's like, oh, it's kind of like Midnight Special. Uh, oh, yeah. It's kind of a similar story, but this looks more of a thriller. Right. But I'm just tired. I'm tired of dark <laughs> superhero. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm just, it's, I don't know. I'm worn yeah. out. Yeah. And my concern is, uh, is this going to be problematic? Is it going to be like, oh, um, this is an outsider. He's dangerous. Like, yeah. we really need that narrative being pushed, but. Right. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, then we have Book Smart, and this got tons of buzz out of South by Southwest. People were really excited about it. I felt like the profanity felt very excessive, like just for mm-hmm. sort of shock value. Uh, that so that I was kind of eh, on, but I know a lot of people really liked it. So you know, we'll see. Yeah. Um. So this trailer reminds me a lot of kind of one of my surprise 
uh, favorite movies of last year, Never Going Back. Um, mm-hmm. It just seems pretty similar in concept. Um, but yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, definitely not one of the movies this summer that I'm most looking forward to. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think I'll like it. I'll probably like it more than you. <laughs> yeah, sulky teenage movies are not my favorite. That's fair. I like the yeah. I mean, I respect them and I respect what they're doing, but I just leave feeling like, why did I spend two hours with that horrible <laughs> teenager? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, so we have Godzilla, King of Monsters. Now we're in the thirty-first. Okay, which first of all, the thirty-first of May. Wow, I don't know what I'm going to be doing this weekend, but I'm excited for <laughs> I'm excited for that weekend. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge monster movie person. Mm-hmm. That is not my favorite. And I just for some reason, I you can't deny it, cast incredible, the special effects look incredible, but I don't know, there's something about it that just feels a little labored to me and a little bit dull. Uh and I hope it won't be, but I I maybe part of it is that I didn't really like Godzilla I didn't Mm -hmm. really like Kong School Island. And so maybe that's part of it. I don't know. I mean, I love Kyle Chandler. It has the girl 11 from uh, Millie Bobby Brown Uh, and just a great cast. So I'll definitely see it and I'm hopeful, but I don't know. Yeah. So I've been kind of guarded about this movie. Um, Largely due to the fact that I wasn't impressed with Godzilla. It kind of bored me. Um, But when I saw Shazam at the IMAX recently, they had like this extended like scene where they, it it was probably about six minutes. They showed like a full scene and then went into kind of a trailer at the end. And I thought it looked really, really good, Mm. especially visually. Like this is something I'll have to see in the IMAX. And it completely like changed my opinion, and now I'm really looking forward to this. Cool, yeah, so. well, that's good to hear. That's very good to hear. So, all right, then we have Rocket Man also on the 31st, and I, I, I was really excited for this when I felt like they were adding some sort of fantasy elements into the story. They were going to have these sort of dreamlike sequences and stuff. I'm a little worried because this last trailer felt very bohemian rhapsody light to me and i didn't see those elements anymore so i hope that they haven't kind of diluted it to try to try to make it more appealing to the bohemian rhapsody crowd and taken out some of those fantasy kind of elements i hope they haven't done that but i'm still pretty pretty intrigued to see it yeah i mean i can't help but compare this to bohemian rhapsody but i think this looks way better personally and part of it is that like i see that they have a bit more creativity yeah. in the way that they're presenting this story um so i i hope you're wrong i hope they didn't uh, backtrack on that that would be a disappointment but yeah um i don't know everything about the trailer it works for me um i really like uh Taryn egerton um yeah i just i, I think it'll be very good. I'm I'm uh, very excited about this one. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think it'll be good. So then we also have Ma out that weekend. <laughs> this is Octavia Spencer terrorizing the neighborhood. Uh, what did you think of this trailer? Um, I really like this trailer. Um, I remember when I first saw this trailer, like my jaw dropped by the end. I I think they show way more than they need to. Uh huh. Um, but man, it looks pretty creepy, and uh, yeah, just my kind of movie. I actually thought it looked really fun too. Okay, wow, yeah, I'm I I'm impressed. I did, thought it looked fun, so I, you know, I might. Uh, I I realized recently recently that I think I like sort of horror comedy a little mm-hmm. bit that aren't taking themselves super seriously better than like this the true like trying to like scare you scare you like right I, I did for another podcast i watched uh, drag me to hell and i thought i'm gonna hate this this is, this is gonna be terrible because <laughs> uh, i don't like exorcism movies or things like that 
and I actually really liked it. I, had, I thought it was really fun and I enjoyed it. I really liked Greta. I thought that it was really fun and oh, okay. uh, campy and I just enjoyed it. And, uh, and so, I don't know, I think that's more my jam than, uh, you know, things like get out has like a sense of humor to yeah. it. Like, I think that's more my style of okay. horror. That makes sense. Thriller. So that's why it kind of appealed to me. So, mm-hmm. Then on the seventh, we have, so I actually say excited on Ma. Uh, on yeah. the seventh, we have X Men Dark Phoenix, and I do not trust these people with Jean Grey. I do not trust her with this story. It looks so bland, it looks so lame, and I hated Apocalypse. I thought it was terrible. And so I am definitely not excited about this. I think it looks, at best, it looks boring to me. I think that'll be <laughs> worse. It'll be just so frustrating. Yeah. Um, so I think with X Men First Class, that was the first time that I really got behind this X Men franchise, uh-huh. and I've looked forward to and enjoyed uh, pretty much everything since, to varying degrees. But I really am not interested in this. Mm. Um, nothing really appeals to me. I I don't feel invested in Jean Grey's character probably because I didn't love the original X-Men trilogy and she's been kind of absent um, in most of the movies since, but yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't do a good job in the original. If you want to see a good depiction of Jean Grey, you should watch the X-Men, the animated series. They do a good job in there. Okay. But uh, I, yeah, I just, yeah. I'm not excited for this at all. And it just feels like Disney's just dumping it. They don't care. Mm-hmm. This is not their movie. And so. Yes. I mean, there's a different X-Men movie that I'm much more looking forward to, but we will not discuss that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then we have The Secret Life of Pets 2. It, that's the most recent trailer. I did a trailer reaction on my channel. There was a lot going on in that trailer. I'm like, what is going on with this trailer? Uh, but I actually liked the first one well enough. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I have a bit of nostalgia for it because it was the first time I ever was on the Rotoscopers podcast. So it really kind of got me kind of more invested in podcasting after that experience. And so I don't know. I, I, it looks it looks bland but fine it looks good fine yeah i don't think i've seen a full trailer i've seen a lot of teasers like um scenes here and there um but i don't think i've seen a full trailer oh, for okay. it. but most of what i've seen like it's it's pretty funny um and it'll i do be- remember kind of liking the original so uh, i don't know well, it'll be interesting because now they have Patton oswald instead of right like, hey so that'll be kind of interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it looked pretty, pretty complicated. Uh, yeah. But, you know, Illumination, they know how to make a lot of money and make bland in a <laughs> So there you go. Fair enough. But <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to it. So. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it way more than X-Men Dark Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. win the weekend uh so then we have this uh also that weekend we have late night and i've seen it so what did you think of the trailer yeah i just saw this trailer a few days ago and i actually think it looks pretty good um interesting concept um pretty good cast so yeah this is actually probably the movie i'm most looking forward to that weekend mm-hmm. yeah i loved it I thought it was so funny. I thought that it it really reminded me of a Nora Ephron script, the way that in, you know, in When Harry Met Sally or You've Got Mail or some of these movies, Sleep in Seattle, they'd add kind of this little bit of social commentary, but it would just be kind of worked into the dialogue so it wouldn't be annoying. And uh, uh, like there's some really funny sort of lines about her being a diversity hire and 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 her sort of oh, right. the back and forth between her and these male writers on the staff can be quite funny and emma thompson is fantastic she, you wish that because i feel like late night tv is just the most bland boring thing it's like <laughs> trump sucked out all the humor out of everybody <laughs> like they all <laughs> forgot how to be funny and and so 
uh, I, I watched it. I'm like, I wish that she had a real show in the chess world because she is way funnier. Than, <laughs> uh, but it also has some heart. It goes places. Uh, John Lithgow is her husband. He's really good. And it has like a little bit of romance, but not like a ton. Uh, it, I just really enjoyed it. I think people are going to really like it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this, if they market it right, if this is kind of the sleeper hit of the summer. Okay. I could see it being sort of a crazy rich Asian kind of, you know, there's always like a comedy that kind of does really well and, and just kind of takes off. I could see it. It, it, it would be a, it would be a bold pick for your top 10, but mm-hmm. I could see it's making a good m- amount of money at least. So anyway. Um, okay. So then we have the dead don't die. <laughs> and I am really excited about this. I think it looks really funny. You have, Adam Driver, Bill Murray, Chloe Sevigny, all these great talented actors. Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton, that's right. <laughs> it just looks really funny. And uh, I, I don't know, I really, I really liked Anna in the Apocalypse. And this looks kind of sort of a similar type of vibe to it in a way. Um, uh, but I don't know, I, I, don't, I thought it looked really funny. Yeah, I agree. This kind of came out of nowhere for me i didn't i didn't know this was happening until a few weeks ago my friend sent me this trailer and i thought it looked hilarious and i love the cast yeah so yeah this is probably one of the movies i'm most looking forward to this summer yeah it looks really good Mm -hmm. uh so then on the 14th we have men in black international i've really liked the trailers for this Oh, I think okay. that they personally, I thought Tess Thompson, it makes, it's like a gender swap that makes sense. Like, why wouldn't you have genders? Uh, why wouldn't you have agents of different genders? Right. Like, of course you would. And I think that Chris Hemsworth is so funny. He does, he does comedic, has such comedic timing. And they've already worked together on Thor Ragnarok. They already have chemistry. We know that. So I was really hopeful. But now I'm hearing all this stuff that it's like test screen terrible and that people, all of a sudden I'm hearing some bad buzz and that could be nothing. But I, I, just as just on the trailers, I was like, this could be a really fun little franchise movie. Okay. See, I have kind of a different opinion. Um, I think it has all the right ingredients, mm-hmm. but something about the trailer just doesn't work for me. Like I remember the first time I saw the trailer, I was like, that's it. I feel like there's got to be more to it. Like it, it doesn't give me much to go off of. It doesn't show me very many interesting like alien characters. So I I don't know. I hope it's good. Um, I do like the leads, um, but Mm -hmm. the trailer hasn't done much for me. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Hmm. We'll, we'll see. So then we also have Shaft coming out that week with Regina Hall, Samuel Jackson, uh, you know, they, these are actors that have a lot of charisma, mm-hmm. but mm, it looked okay to me. It didn't look awful. Yeah, I'm in the same boat here. Um, I haven't seen any other Shaft movie or show. Um, I do think it's kind of cool that they're bringing back uh, both of the other actors that have played Shaft. So we're going to have three generations of Shaft now. Um, but I, I don't even know if I'll go see this, which... Uh, that says a lot <laughs> it's just i'm not, i'm not the demographic for this i guess since i've never cared about shaft right uh so then we have uh toy story 4 <laughs> the I, battle of the toys uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> so that's right so i am not sold on forky the whole idea of forky I even though there's an there's a Twitter account for Forky and they are hilarious, <laughs> so that's making me more favorable. But I I'm still not sold on it. But everybody I know, I mean not I know everybody that I've read that has seen portions of it has seen it has just loved it and said so they're just bawling. And everybody that got to see like 20 minutes of it, CinemaCon, were like, this is amazing. We love it. And so it, it's, I mean, Tim Allen and Tom Hanks just said it was, I mean, of course, they're probably going to say something like that, but right. just the, the amount of drama to their statements is so like, whoa, okay. 
and uh they don't have to say more than they feel they could just give sort of a you know a nice respectable answer and so that's what i'm hopeful about especially the cinema con buzz that came out of there uh that it will be it'll be good yeah i i actually do like forky um i think forky is gonna be a good representation of people who um kind of are going through existential crises they don't know why they belong they don't know why they're different um and i i i know a lot of people have actually theorized that forky is like representing like a gay character Mm. um which i think that's interesting like i don't think it'll be in your face if that is the case he does have a little rainbow on his foot which is kind of the clue there. And so I think that would, that would be kind of cool for uh, yeah. not just kids that are gay, but kids that do feel different. And they're like, why am I the way I am? I didn't ask to be made. Um, yeah. I, I think it could be a really needed storyline. So I'm excited for this. I didn't even think of that. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, Child's Play and i guess the fans are like super upset about this they don't like it i've heard a lot of things to my friends who cover horror uh but i thought it looked really lame i've never seen one of these movies eh. i've seen bits and pieces of them when i was younger um i've never held chucky near and dear to my heart but i do think the trailer looks pretty good i like aubrey plaza a lot so that's a big selling point for me. Um, so I'm interested to see what they'll do with this. I mean, Mark Hamill, you know, is the voice. Oh, yes. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Then we have on the 28th, we have Annabelle Comes Home. and Another toy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Killer doll. I don't know. This one looked really bad to me. I thought it had, it, I mean, I don't mind a good jump scare. I think it can be fun. But this just looked super jump scary and just mm. uh, it looked lame to me yeah i'm kind of losing hope in the uh conjuring universe i mean the last annabelle was pretty good especially compared to the first one which was awful but um did you notice that annabelle was in shazam no i didn't notice that. yeah it's like it was so random they they go into the pawn shop near the beginning of shazam and i look down in the corner and i'm like that's annabelle it was like unmistakably annabelle i just thought that was so random um i'm (laughs) guessing maybe it was uh since james wan kind of started the conjuring universe and he did aquaman so maybe that was a connection there but (laughs) i guess so but yeah i i uh, uh i'm not super optimistic about this but hopefully it will (laughs) <laughs> although it does feel somewhat appropriate that the conjuring universe maybe is actually also part of the dc <laughs> i think that would be a good good merging yes yeah <laughs> should do that. uh so then we have yesterday and i actually i thought this looked clever i thought it looked fun and and i like you know i like all the actors in it and mm-hmm. and i was so surprised after the trailer came out there were all these people online all these youtubers and pundits and whatever they're like this looks terrible what it looks awful and i i just don't know what they're seeing that i'm not seeing because i thought it looked really fun and you know i love a good beatles mashup oh me too uh yeah i love the beatles and this was another one that came out of nowhere for me and uh i saw the trailer on facebook and i had to share it because i was excited about it right away i think it looks very clever um i think it'll be Mm -hmm. a lot of fun me too. Uh, so then we have 47 meters down, uncaged. And I am one of the rare people mm-hmm. that really enjoyed the first one. <laughs> I thought it was really fun. I saw it twice in the theaters with different friends and we all enjoyed it. But then like everybody online hates it. But I don't know. I just liked the idea of a shark movie that was underwater. That was fun to me. And you actually got to see the whole shark instead of just the, you know, the fin of the shark and uh, i thought it built tension well i actually liked the ending i thought that was kind of different and artistic and uh i just really enjoyed it and this looks terrible (laughs) so i don't think i'll enjoy this yeah i think this is a case of uh a cheap movie made a decent amount of money 
And so they got to capitalize it up by rushing out another uh, a, a sequel for it. Yeah. There's not uh, even like a real trailer. It's just like a weird kind of, mish- I don't know. It's yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't think it'll be very good at all. <laughs> but I did not enjoy the first one. So. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was so much fun. I really <laughs> did. Uh, so then uh, we have The Other Side of Heaven 2. This would just be a big deal in the like Mormon community <laughs> in uh, in Utah and Idaho and Arizona kind of areas because uh, the first one uh, is one of the better made uh, um, you know Mormon movies. <laughs> uh, it was it was distributed by Disney, and so people kind of hold it on very high regard. And it's just like it's about the first one is about this missionary that you know, has these incredible experiences serving in Tonga. And then the second one is all about his work as basically like a church leader, as a mission president over there. Uh, and uh, so it's an older person. I'm excited about it, but it's kind of a niche little movie there. Okay. I didn't know it was um, a direct sequel to it. I thought, yeah. I thought it might have been a different person that it was following oh right yeah no it is it is so i would hope i hope it'll be good because i like every audience to get good movies so Mm -hmm. exactly so then we have the 5th of july we have spider-man far from home and i really like this version of peter parker a lot i like Mm -hmm. homecoming i wasn't quite it wasn't top 10 of the year for me like it was for other people but i enjoyed it well enough and i think it's gonna be really fun having jake gyllenhaal as this villain guy i think that'll be fun nick fury is involved i always like to see that and this yeah this is their year for like really pimping out nick fury (laughs) (laughs) but he's dead yeah (laughs) (laughs) right uh so i i think this looks fun yeah um i i liked homecoming quite a bit actually Mm -hmm. um this trailer was a bit disappointing for me. Uh, it didn't seem to have the same charm that Homecoming had. Of course, I could be wrong, um, but I, I'm looking forward to it. But the trailer has not sold me, so um, that's actually probably a good thing. I'll probably go in there and be like, "Wow, that was a lot better than I expected." Yeah, it's the secret to happiness in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, notice I mean, there's I, no I, Iron Man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I thought that that Homecoming was like a B movie, and everybody else seemed to think it was an A movie. That was I still like. It was an A movie for me. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so then the twelfth we have, uh, Stuber. It's called, Mm -hmm. and I I didn't think this looked very funny to me. It could be funny, but this trailer didn't sell sell me. Yeah. Um. So I saw this trailer the other day. I was in the movie theater. But I was kind of distracted. I don't know what I was doing, but so I only caught kind of the second half. But I thought it looked fairly interesting. Um, it'll it'll be nice to see um, Drax. I can't remember his name. <laughs> yes, it'll be interesting to see him. Uh, not all uh, purple. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. love his comedy in the guardians movie I mean, that's part yeah. of it I mean, it's not my favorite him just making fun of what's her name the whole time i didn't like that oh but, like he does a uh is it mantis he yeah mantis. yeah <laughs> poor I mantis like that. um <laughs> but i don't know it could be funny it just didn't grab me in the trailer but yeah. then we have lion king and this just looks really bland and not exciting to me um i i think if you want a photorealistic lion king then you'll probably like it i have no need for a photo photo realistic lion king that's not a desire of my heart i like animation so i it's just not like it'll be fun for the people that want it and it'll probably just be kind of bland and not great for me but we'll see uh you know it's it's it is tremendous that they can create this photorealism but i don't like the new scar at all (laughs) and i i don't like how you can't really see the expression on their faces and their eyes the way they have them designed and i just 
I, it looks exactly the same as the original and I don't care. Yeah. I have no problem with the scar. I've already said that to you. I said that's the least of my concerns. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything I said for Aladdin, I'm going to I'm carry this over yeah. uh, for this movie, except probably more so. Like it looks shot yeah. for shot like the animated movie. Mm-hmm. So what's the point? I mean, it, it's literally just for people that want photo, that don't like animation and want photorealism. I guess. I don't know. You have people like crying and stuff, and I don't get it. I, and I, I was one understand. of those people when they said they were going to do this, make the Lion King. I was like, hey, guys, give it a chance. It'll probably be pretty good. I'm backtracking. Like, there's no, if you're not going to do something original or something creative with it, don't do it. Yeah. The only thing that they're doing that's original from all we can tell so far is taking away stuff that was good. Yeah. They, I, they, <laughs> they get rid of Scar. They get rid of Be Prepared. I can't imagine them doing the uh, just can't wait to be king like they do yeah, in the animated. They probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> it will. I don't know. I'm just very meh on it, but it'll probably make a billion dollars. So Yes. Yeah. Job. It'll be one of the top 10 movies ever. So, uh, <laughs> um, so then on the 26th, we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I, I would say this looks very well made, but I don't think it's for me. Yeah, probably not for you. It's probably for me. It seems yeah. a little bit, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like, uh, the Quentin Tarantino that I know. Like, uh, it seems kind of like a different kind of film for him, but, um, I really like the cast. Yeah. Um, I'm just very curious what they're going to do with it. Leonardo and, DiCaprio coming out of hiding mm-hmm. after he got his Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, I got my Oscar. I can take a break. And uh, yeah. now he's he's thirsty for a second one. So. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> but, and, yeah, I'm looking forward yeah. to this one. Mm-hmm. So last one we have on the 31st, we have Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Uh, this looks fun enough to me. I just wish that they had gotten a child. I think mm. it's so weird that in all of these movies for children, it's almost always young adults and not a ch- not children. Like I, I just wish they had done what Nim's Island had done, which I love. I think that movie's so fun. And it's a little girl, and she's. Ex- I mean, that's what Dora is. Dora is about a little girl that's exploring (laughs) so i don't know i just i love that show for kids because it's so interactive like it really gets the kids to be responding you know say they'll say dora which way should they go on the map or whatever and the kids will be like go that you know go to the map or go left or they'll be screaming at the screen and that's so fun and (laughs) i think that you could have really worked in some of those interactive kind of elements maybe break the fourth wall been really creative with it but it looks like a fun enough adventure for kids but i don't know feels like a bit of a missed opportunity at the same time for me yeah anytime uh this trailer's played before a movie i'm seeing uh, i just see people like groaning and putting their head in their hand um i personally am not very familiar with door the explorer so i i don't Mm -hmm. I don't have that disappointment that maybe some other people do. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it looks okay. I, I did like the girl in Instant Family. Um, so hopefully it's all right. <laughs> you know what? Well, no, she wouldn't have been good because she's not Latino. But somebody like the little girl on uh, on American Housewife. Somebody that's just kind of cute and precocious and fun. And, like, that's the kind of thing mm-hmm. that I wish they had done. But oh, okay. well we'll see so there you go we did it we went through and (laughs) and uh, yeah i think that uh i am most excited i'm really excited for all for the for late night come out and see what people think of that because i've already seen it but um what am i most excited for um i guess hmm no, there's a lot that i'm kind of that i think i could love but mm-hmm. i'm not sure um i don't know like 
it's weird. Yeah, there's not one that's like I'm so <laughs> excited for that movie, I guess. Yeah. But um but yeah, I'm excited to see what people think of Late Night. Okay. See, I have quite a few that I'm excited for. Um usually I try to name 3, but um The Dead Don't Die, that looks really good. Mhm. That's one that I would say The Dead Don't Die. I am looking forward to Toy Story 4. Mhm. Um I think Yesterday looks really good. And I'm just going to say May 31st. Uh, Godzilla King of Monsters, Rocket Man, Ma. Looking forward to all of those. Yeah. So. They look really fun. So <laughs> we, my, my most anticipated for sure is, is, is Palms. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> and and I, I'm hopeful for Longshot. There's a lot that I'm really hopeful and I think I probably will like. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. So we will see. Uh, so where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I am the David Healy, and you can also find me on Facebook in our Facebook group, Film Freaks. It's uh, facebook.com slash film freaks group. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, and on Ron Tomatoes, as we well know. <laughs> and you can, if you're listening on iTunes, if you can give us your ratings and reviews, we really appreciate it. And if you're listening on YouTube, if you can give us your thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that too. So thanks so much. And let us know what you're excited about, what, what you're not excited about, what trailers are interesting to you. Uh, we would love to hear. So Thanks so much, Dave. This is really fun. And yeah. we're forward to doing our recap. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yep. Uh should be an exciting time. <laughs> okay. <I'll laughs> talk to you later. Bye. Bye.